Hello and welcome to the seventh episode of our mini stealth tutorial series where we're using a gameplay kit and sprite kit to create a small roguelike stealth like game. And today we'll be improving our Pathfinder solution that we implemented last episode using the features that are uh, provided by gameplay kit. So Pathfinding is one of the core problems that gameplay kit solves or at least has a solution for and again this is uh, the solution that gameplay kit provides is pretty generic so it works both in 3d as well as in 2d D scenarios it works for both grids hexagons as well as arbitrary tiles and uh, because it's so flexible it can be a bit complicated to start using uh, although for working with 2d grids there is a dedicated solution built in that helps uh, uh, helps accelerate uh, implementing pathfinding uh, when you have grid-like games such as ours. So typically the, the basic uh, uh, constructs in the, uh, the, the pathfinder solution gameplay kit are using a graph and that's uh, uh, represented by GK graph instance and nodes and those are instances of GK graph nodes and these basically describe the world as well as uh, uh, in terms of all the places that are known. Those are called nodes and where you can go from one node to the other. That those are the connections between the nodes and those make up a graph. Because we have a grid based game, we can use specialized types that help construct the, the graph. It makes it easier to construct the graph. And our main task in implementing pathfinding using gameplay kit is translating our world model into a graph that gameplay kit can understand. And we, uh, once we've done that, we can call the graph find path from to uh, function to retrieve an array representing the actual path. So where should we implement pathfinding? Well, we are going to implement it in the map structure. And the main reason for that is that we, uh, in this game, maps are static. And we uh, know we only need to calculate the pathfinding graph once. Because uh, as the map won't change, uh, we know that we never have to recalculate the pathfinding graph. Now, if you want to differentiate between different types of pathfinding, so for instance, uh, perhaps you implement flying or scaling uh, cliffs and so on. Uh, you can implement multiple graphs that represent uh, th those types of uh, those types of movement as well. And to implement, what we need to do is we need to define a graph uh, that holds the actual pathfinder graph. We also need a way of translating from the coordinates in the world uh, in our world's model to the nodes in the pathfinder graph. We're going to use uh, an, a dictionary to uh, perform that translation. And finally, we'll create a function that lets us uh, uh, enter a, a, a starting and an end coordinate, and then it should retrieve the uh, an actual path in, in factors as well. So our implementation sequence today is going to be pretty straightforward. First, we'll translate the map into a GK grid graph and then we'll replace the naive pathfinding in our AI simple patrol comp uh, component with the new pathfinding solution. So let's start with translating the map into a GK grid graph. And we have said we'll do that in the map, uh, in, in, in our map structure. And the first thing we'll need to do here is import gameplay kit so we get access to all the pathfinding solutions. And then we should add the new uh, the new properties that we need so we could add a pathfinding uh, let's see so what do we need we need a private variable a graph and this will be a gk grid graph and it will hold gk grid graph nodes and we need our uh, a vector to node map and this will be a dictionary to translate from a vector to a gk grid graph node we can 
initialize this one directly because we want to start as an empty one as well. And then what we'll do is we'll create and go down a bit and we'll create a, a mark here and say this is where our pathfinding starts. And then we have a private function called create pathfinding graph. And this one will return two things for us. It will return the, uh, the, the translation map. So the dictionary that translates from vectors to GK grid graph nodes. And it will return a graph. And this will be the GK grid graph node that we require. And we'll start by initializing at least the node map to an empty dictionary. And then we'll construct our graph. Well, th this is sort of a two stage process. So we'll start with a GK grid graph uh, from a grid uh, starting at, uh, and this takes a factor in two. It's basically similar to our factor, uh, although worded a bit differently. Um, we need a width and a height. We'll come back to this. And we need to tell whether diagonals are allowed. We'll allow it for our enemies. And we need to add which type of nodes we want to create. So we'll create grid graph nodes. And this one also requires grid graph nodes. Now notice that we need a width and a height. So uh, the graph needs to know how large it is, and we have no easy way of finding that yet. But what we'll do is we'll create a new property called size, and this will just be a vector. And what we'll do is we'll, uh, while we're uh, building up the world, we'll see where the longest line is. So what we'll do is we'll take a variable called longest line. This will be our width in the end. And uh, we'll go through each uh, line in lines. And we'll just say our longest line is equal to the maximum of the current longest line and the line length. So if I have a longer line, then we'll set longest line to that value. And our size will be a factor uh, and it's have a width of the longest line and the height will be lines, the number of lines. So we now know how large our, we now know how large our, uh, our map is. So as a width, we can use our size dot X and as a height, we do, can use a size dot Y. And this one requires int 32s. So this requires a cost. And we now have a grid, graph. This by default creates a graph that has a node at each coordinate starting at 0, 0 up until uh, the width and the height, connecting to each and every uh, adjacent uh, uh, cell or, uh, or node, including the diagonals. So this basically uh, describes a graph where you can go from anywhere to anywhere and there uh, are absolutely no obstructions or whatever. To describe our actual world and where in the places where we can and cannot uh, enter, what we'll do is we're going to remove all the nodes that the player cannot enter. So what we'll do is we'll go for uh, each for the node in uh, our graph.nodes. And this will be a grid graph node because that's the type we defined it as. But unfortunately, that information is lost uh, in this optional. So we all. And we need to make sure we unwrap this one as well. Then we have a coordinate 
and the coordinate will be a vector of a grid uh, node dot grid position dot x and the grid node dot grid position dot y. So basically, we need to translate uh, the position of the grid, the grid position that is an uh, that that uh, that is a vector int two to our type of vectors. Now this doesn't work directly because this requires uh, these to be uh, to, to be ints. Um, what we can do is add another constructor in in vector to make uh, to also accept these types of uh, of integers to make this a bit more easy. This unfortunately also means that we need to spell out this uh, uh, the standard initializer as well. We can no longer just use the one that's automatically generated. Uh, but then we can also add an int32 and initializer that takes It takes these as arguments, and this will make it a bit easier to translate between vectors and uh, vector two ints uh, uh, as used in GameBlinkit. So let's go back to our map. This one should now lo no longer complain. So we have our coordinate. And then we need to, so we have all the nodes in our map as well. And now we need to check for the ones that are not enterable. So we'll say let nodes to remove equals uh, cells. And then we'll filter on the one that are not enterable. So we'll take out all the ones that are not enterable. And we'll translate this, uh, and we'll uh, translate these to uh, actual nodes because we need to remove node maps. So this is where we need our node map, and we'll try and get the coordinates from those and get back the nodes. And this should provide us with a list of uh, an array of no uh, a grid graph nodes. And then we can say graph dot remove. And an array of node nodes to remove. And we only now have left uh, a graph that only contains those nodes that are enterable because we removed all the ones that are not enterable. They are still in the, uh, in the dictionary, but that's really not an issue. You could remove them there as well if you want, but there's no reason to do so. So we need to return our node map and our graph. And it means that we can go to an initializer and start initializing our uh, graph as well. So I will say let our result equals create the pathfinder graph, and this will be the result of graph. And we have our vector node map, our result dot map. And that should be all the initializing we need to do. Finally, in map, we need to implement our function where we can create a path from a coordinate to a coordinate. And this one returns an array of vectors. So we'll try and find the, uh, the from node in our vector to node map. And we'll try and find our to node from our vector to node map. So we're translating coordinates into nodes. If this for some reason fails, then we'll just print out that we failed to convert coordinates to nodes. And we'll just return an empty array. Um, our path should be our graph, find the path from the from node to the to node. 
and now we have a path described as an array of graph nodes. Now what we need to do is we'll re we want to get an array of vectors. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll return the, uh, we'll, we'll map our path and we'll take a node in and we'll create a position at, for our node as a GK grid graph node. So we know these should be grid graph nodes and we'll have a grid position then. And then we can return a vector that takes a position dot X and a position dot Y. And this returns an array of vectors. So that's all that we need to do to translate the map into a GK grid graph. Now we should replace the pathfinder solution uh, in the simple patrol component with the new pathfinding solution. And that's some, uh, something we're going to do in the uh, pursuing state.swift file. Uh, because this is where we had our uh, naive pathfinding solution. So let's comment all this out and start using the new one. Uh, so we'll start by creating a path as in our world.map.path from, let's see, and we'll start at our owners.position to our target.position. Now this path should be should at least have a single entry. If it doesn't, then we'll say we we'll print uh, no valid path found from another position to target that position. Note that if the owner and the target are on the same uh, cell or the same coordinate, then we should at least get the path with a single uh, entry uh, and that's the, the, the same coordinate back. So if we don't get anything back, then probably something went wrong. So we'll just return. If we need our direction, so there are now two cases. So it could be that our path kind is equal to exactly one. In that case, we'll say our path, uh, our direction will be our path, uh, the first path variable minus the owner position. So the difference between those two, this could be zero if it's already at the right position. Otherwise, uh, this will be the there will be two entries at least in the array. Then we should have the second one because the first one is the start position of the owner. We'll say we'll have uh, the second one and we'll take the difference to the owner dot position. And now we should have a direction that we can start using again uh, to to move the player. And I think this should be should compile and should uh, should be enough to meet our goal for today. Okay, so let's see. So we have a player. Oh, it's already chasing us. And he caught us. There's probably no way of escaping this. Uh, 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 and this enemy now because it knows how to walk around the uh, uh, the corners as well. So this is uh, this is working. If you want to see, for instance, let's see, you want to see a path, we can print out a path here just to get an ID. So look, it created a path and it contains all the in between steps to get to the uh, to, to the player. It will recreate the path each. Uh, it will recreate the path each uh, step, and finally it will find the player. So this uh, this work. Let's just get rid of this one. So this is enough to meet our goal for today. Next time. Uh, we'll add a bit of polish. What we'll do is we'll center the view, so the map will be uh, nice and center of the uh, of the screen. 
we're going to add alert so you get a bit more feedback when an, an enemy finds a player for instance and finally we'll add this, uh, a simple sound effect to just give it a bit more make it a bit more clear that something interesting is happening so thanks for watching and have a good day